Today we're going to geek out about Torres. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee from Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a game called Taurus. Now, Taurus is a game by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, and it actually came out uh, quite a while ago. In fact, it was the 2000 Spiel des Jahres winner, and I, recently IDW has reprinted it, and they were gracious enough to send me a copy to review, and that's what we're going to take a look at. Taurus is a game for two to four players. It plays in roughly about an hour, and it is an abstract game where you're trying to grow your kingdom, place your knights, and really just score the most points. So I'm going to take you over here, I'm going to show you how to play, and then I'm going to do a run through and let you know my thoughts in the end. Alright, so this is a three player setup of Torres, and you'll see that we have one of each character marker on a castle spot, as well as the king has been placed as well. Now, when you do this, you're going to kind of go around the table and take turns putting down your character, and then one player will set the king marker down. Now, each player will have a set of castles in reserve, as well as five character meeples. And they will also receive 10 cards in their player color, which will indicate different special options or special actions that they can do throughout the course of the game. So the game is played in a series of years, and each year has seasons. Now if you look here, this is the three player card, and it shows you that the first year you have four seasons, and the second and third year you have three seasons each. Now this also indicates the number of castles that each player is given per year. Now on your turn, you'll have five action points that you can spend and take a number of different actions. Now first, you may place a knight, so you can add a character. So you can do this in an adjacent square that is not diagonal, but it has to be adjacent to one of your knights that you already have in play. Now this knight has to be on the same level. So for example, if this, were how the, if this was the layout of the board, you couldn't place a knight on a higher level like that. You would still have to place it a level lower. Now as another action, you may move a knight, and each space moved is one action point. Now you may move down any number of levels, and that would be one action point. And you may move up one level for one action point. So again, for example, if this stack were three high, you may move down for one action point. You would not be able to move up because this is greater than one step up. This is three steps, so you would not be able to step up that way. Now as another action, you may expand your castle. So you would pick one of your stacks. Now again, if you take a look here at, this, uh, at the year card that we have, you will see that the stacks are pre-laid pre out. So you have two stacks here with three, and two stacks with two, and then you have two threes and a two on either of these. So what that means is the first year, and I have them set up here already for, this is the blue and the yellow player, but there's a, a three stack and a three stack and then two two stacks. When you're going to expand your castle, you can pick any stack that you want to, but you cannot take from multiple stacks. And the stack that you choose to use, you have to be able to play all your castle pieces or you lose them. Unless, and what I mean by that is with your action points, so each one of these will be one action point to place. Now let's say you only have two action points left, you obviously would not be able to place this third one. Now you would lose this one last castle unless you could place it on another stack that has fewer than three castles. Now you may never have four castles. So if I, if I take these and I only use two of them, I could not put that, this last one on this stack of three because it would be one too many. But I could place it here to use on another turn or place it here. If you don't have anywhere else you could place it in your stack, you would just return this to the supply. All right, now when you place your castles and expand them, you may place them anywhere on the board. So again, if I'm the yellow player, I could expand the castle that I'm in or I could expand this castle here. I could expand my opponent's castle all the same. It really doesn't matter. You can place wherever you want. As another action, you may take an action card. When you do this, you take three cards. 
you look at them and you select the one that you want. In this case, this one gives you six action points or this one will let you jump up two steps instead of one. And you would pick the, the one that you want and then you could place the other two back in the deck and you could choose whether to place them on top of the deck, on the bottom of the deck, or you could place both on top or both on the bottom. As another action, you may play an action card. And now this actually does not take any action points, but you can only play one per season. Once you play it, it is out of the game. And finally, for an action, you may move your knight one space on the scoring track. Now an interesting item of note here, let's say I was the blue character and I had one, point of, uh, one action point left and I wanted to move up the track, I would not share this space with my opponent. I would actually jump over them and go to the spot in front of them. So now one note on movement, let's say for example, the board were set up as such. You may move your knight in one of the doors on the castle and out any other door on the castle, as long as it's on the same level or lower. So for example, I could move into this door here and come out over here if I wanted to. Now when it comes to scoring, you will score each castle that you have a knight in and you will score the base of the castle, which is how sprawling the castle is. So for example, right here, this castle would be a base of four. And you would multiply that by the height of your tallest knight. So in this case, this knight is on the first level. So you would multiply one by four. And I would get four points if I were the blue knight. Now, if I had a yellow knight up here, yellow would score four base times three high. So yellow would score 12 points for this. Now, if yellow had multiple knights, he would only score one time for this castle because you will only score once per castle, no matter how many knights you have in it. All right, now another item of note is you can never have a castle be taller than its base. So in this example, this is a base of four. I could not make this castle five pieces high because the base is four. However, if I first extended it out to five, then I would be able to place this fifth one. And also when you're extending your castles, you may not extend your castle if it will connect to another castle. So this movement here would be illegal. And I also could not extend this way. But I could extend this way here because it's not going to touch another castle. But again, I would not be able to place a piece here or a piece here because it would touch this castle. Diagonal is okay. And at the end of each year, you will score the king. And in order to do that, let's say you build out a castle and you have multiple people are on it. The first year, anybody who was in the castle as the king, not only would they score this castle, for, so for example here, it's a base of four, and yellow here is on the first level, so yellow and blue would actually both get four points for this. Also, you would score the first year, if you're on the first level of the castle that the king is in, you will get five points. So in this case, blue and yellow would get an additional five points. Now, if green happened to be here, and was on a second level, he would get no points because this is the first year and the king will only score those who are on the first level. On the second year, whatever castle the king is in, he will score the second level. So in this case, green would get points and blue and yellow would not. In the second year, the king is worth 10 points. And then finally, on the third year, the king will score all of those who are on a third level of the castle that the king is in. And the third year, the king will score you 15 points. All right, one other item of scoring that I should bring up is there are these things called master cards that are optional and um, typically you probably wouldn't play with them your first play while you get comfortable with the game. But if you look here, there's a whole stack of them that give you uh, different items to work for. Some might pay out at the end of the game, like in this case, at the end of the third year, if all of your characters are next to each other, you'd get 40 extra victory points. Um, this one is if any of your characters, any of your knights are in the uh, outer circle, you get two points per knight at the end of the first, uh, first year. What is that? Five points at the end of the second. And at the end of the third year, you get 10 points. 
So there's just other ways to gain points, kind of like uh, in-game achievements, if you will. Okay, so now I'm going to go through just a real brief run through just an example of how some gameplay would work. Now in doing this I'm not going to use any kind of strategy I'm just going to play to kind of show different elements of, of gameplay. So we'll go from uh, over here where I have yellow, blue, and then green. We'll start with yellow and work our way over and just to kind of go through a few a few turns here. I, my goal is to go through at least one year and then uh, show setup for year two. Okay, so first we're going to go with the yellow player, and he's going to work off of the stack of three. So I'm going to say, place the tile, or place the castle for one action point, and I will place the second uh, here, and I also place one here next to the king, so that's three, and I'm going to do for two, four, five. I will place my other knight. Now we'll move on to the blue player. Now the blue player is going to add one, two, going to move up for three, and then he will place another knight for four, five. Now I'm left with this one castle piece over, or that's left over, and I will place it in one of these stacks of two that blue has. Now we'll use the green player, and the green player will go one, two, um, say place a new guy for three, four, and then for five, he's going to draw a card. So let's take three cards here. We have three different options. Um, this one here will let us move our character diagonally to a higher place. Uh, this one would let us, our, our knight would be able to move into a lower level door and come out an upper level door. And this one would let us jump over uh, an opponent's character. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just take this diagonal one. I'm going to place it here next to them. And that is the end of turn one. Turn two will go back to yellow. Yellow wants to get over to the king. So yellow is going to go one, two. And then we're going to go three, um, we'll say four, and five. Now I'll go over to blue. Blue is going to go one, two, three. Oops, I was taking from different piles here. And then this knight's going to go into this castle door for four and come out here. And he will, let's say, draw a card. So we'll take again, we'll take three blue cards. We'll look here. This would let me take one from the general supply and put it uh, anywhere on the board. This one would give me seven action points. And this one would let me go up two towers. So. We'll take the one from that general supply, and then I'll put this one on top, and I'll place this one on the bottom. Which I didn't do that with uh, with green, but same same principle. Okay, and then for green, green is going to say, add one, add two, well, actually we'll add one, add two, add three, he'll move in for four, we'll put them out here. I'm gonna move up here for five. So now both yellow and green have a character next to the king on level one, so they would score uh, at the end of this, at the end of the year, providing that they're still there. Okay, and now uh, we'll go over to, back to yellow. Yellow will go ahead and move one. Place the castle for two. Oops. Third action will be to move there. And let's keep making this castle longer. Okay, now blue, what was this card here? Uh, place the castle from the general supply. So blue is, <laughs> blue desperately wants to get in here. So blue can add 
This is kind of where the movement in the castles comes in handy. Blue can place this here for one. Move here to two. Come in the castle, come out here, and then move up here for four. And I'm going to place this next castle piece here. Move over to green. Green is going to go one, two, and have another, uh, another knight. And we'll go three, four, five. Now, he did not place this last one, so this will get returned to the supply because his only stack left has three. We couldn't put it here to save for later, so we would have to just discard this one. Okay, now we'll go back to yellow, and yellow is going to go one, two, three, four, and then yellow's pretty content, so yellow's going to move up one on the victory point for five. And we'll go over to blue. Blue is going to go one, two, three, uh, four, five, and then also play this card because this card will be played for free. And allowing me to take one from the general supply and placing it anywhere he wants, place it there. And then green can play this card for free, which you will move here for one. Actually, that was a free action. So there's one, two, three, four, and then we'll take a turn on the, or a point on the victory point. We'll put them up to two. And that is the end of year one. All right, so let's start with scoring. So here we have the yellow player is on uh, the fourth level of a castle. It is one, two, three, four, five. So five times four is 20. So we will move them from one to 21. Now, yellow also has a knight on this castle here on the first level, which is one, two, three, four. So four times one will give you four points, taking them from 21 to 25. Now, yellow also gets to score because he has a knight on level one at the end of year one with the king. So that would be an extra five points for yellow, bringing him from 25 to 30. All right, now we'll score blue. Blue has a knight here on the third level, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times three is 21, so blue will get 21 points. Blue also has a knight here on the, on the first level, base of four, so four times one is four, so moving from 21 to 25. And then finally, blue will get another five points because he's on level one with the king at the end of the first year. So he gets five more points. Now that would usually take him to 30 because yellow is already there. This moves him up to space 31. Finally, we'll look at green. Green also has a knight on this seven base castle, but on the second level. So that gives him 14 points, bringing him to 16. He has a knight on the third level of this four base, which will give him an additional 12 points, taking him from 16 to 28. And then he also has a knight uh, on the first level of this four, so that gives him four more points. So one, two, three, four. And then finally, he will get five more points because he shares the first level in the castle that the king is on, taking him from 32 to 37. And that is the end of first year scoring. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up for the second year so you can see what that will look like. So here we are set up for the second year. As you can see here, we have two stacks of three and one stack of two. And now the player in last place gets to choose where to move the king to if they want to move the king at all. So in this case, it would be yellow. So yellow would probably want to move the king Let's say over to here. Now the goal would be for yellow to hopefully block out from the other players getting access to this castle. So yellow will have first turn and yellow will go one, two, 
three, four, and then five. Now yellow is on the second stack of the, or is on the second level of the castle that the king is in. We'll go over to blue. Now blue is going to add one here. Step down for one. Move through the castle for two. Up for three. And then have a, create a new knight for five. We'll go over to green. Green on the other hand is going to build one, two, three, four, and then say five. Actually, we'll take a card for five. So we'll take, I guess three cards, and we'll just say that he'll take this one to add one from the general supply. And we'll put this on top and this on the bottom. Really doesn't matter. Now we will go back to yellow. And yellow is going to say one, two, three, four. And we'll just say five. Blue is going to take a card for one. And we'll keep the seven action points. Put these both to the bottom. And then we'll say two, three, four, and five. And then green. is going to place, oops, I'm going to place one here. One, two, three. Four, and five. Probably not the best way to do it. And I took some of the wrong supply here when I played blue, but we get the idea here. And then you would carry on, and at the end, if this were the end level scoring, you would score, now yellow would only score this castle because this is the only castle that yellow has knights on. When it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times one, two, three, four, eight times four being 32, yellow would get 32 points for this castle, and you would only score the highest knight, and then yellow would get an additional 10 points for having a character on the second level of the castle that the king is on. And you would continue through and score the rest of the characters and the rest of the players the same way. All right guys, so that was Torres. What are my thoughts on Torres? So let's start with the art. So the art is really, um, it's not a main component of the game. And what I mean by that is the board looks great considering that all this is is just a square that you're placing your castles on. They do a very nice job of kind of adding some art to the side of a, a knight on a horse and making the board interesting. So I, I, I thought that the art, as far as being eye-catching, I thought it did its job. Um, this isn't the type of game where, you know, the art plays a huge role. I think really the components play the majority of the role in this game, obviously. Um, so I, I thought for the game, it was great. I appreciate the fact that the cards that you use uh, for the actions, the action cards, were without words so while initially it took a little bit to kind of catch okay what does this one mean what does that one mean I appreciated the fact that you could just flip the card and you more or less knew what it was there was no reading involved so as a result I could play this with my younger kids the components were really great uh, they were very high quality the castle pieces were weighty and they stacked nicely and they looked great um, my only point of disappointment was in the knight pieces. Um, they were a little narrow. They're about the circumference of a pencil. So they were easily knocked over. So when you're placing and stacking, if you bump slightly or just nudge them ever so lightly, they'll go tumbling off of the top of the tower and there goes your knight. So 
I wish they would have had a little bit maybe wider or fatter pieces, but all in all, it's just a minor detractor to the overall component quality. The cards were nice. They had a nice little finish to them. Uh, so everything about the quality of the components was great. As for gameplay, the gameplay was really enjoyable. Uh, when I first played it, I played a two-player game with my wife to get comfortable with playing it, and it played very well. We both caught on very quickly, and, and we had a good time with the game. And then we tried a second game, and we included my 11-year-old son, and he caught on right away as well. And it, all in all, was really easy to teach him, and he, he took to the game and did very well his first time. We ended up uh, having a game night a couple days later and we did a couple playthroughs with uh, four players. And again, the game was very well received. It was a lot of fun. And all in all, everybody who has played it has really enjoyed it. I can see this game is actually getting a lot of play because it's light enough that you can break it out is not in a filler manner because it is a longer game. You're gonna play for, the box says 60 minutes. I think you could probably if you're playing quickly, you could probably cut that in half, but you know, 40, 45 minutes for a game. So it's a little more than a filler game, but it's great. It's a, a great brain burner when you're just kind of down for the night, you want to play a game, but you don't feel like um, really getting in depth with a lot of stuff. It's a real simple, uh, quick to pick up, quick to put together and, and just play. And I, I, that was definitely a positive factor in the game. Again, I played this game with younger children all the way through to seasoned gamers, and every one of us enjoyed the game. In fact, I don't think anybody was disappointed in the game, and even the seasoned gamers that I played with were, were cool with playing another game. Um, in fact, one of them requested, hey, let's run through that again. That was fun, that was quick, and I really enjoyed it. So that was a nice thing, is that it will see replay in my game groups. So all in all, I would definitely recommend you check this game out. We had a lot of fun with it. It has seen replay, and it went from young to old, and from casual to seasoned gamers, and everybody has enjoyed this game that I played this with. So I would definitely go check this out. All right, guys, I'm Lee with Geek City USA. Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to like and comment, subscribe. I'd love to interact with you in your comments below, or check us out on Facebook and interact with us there. Again, thanks for checking us out. Take care.